worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come before his presence with thanksgiving. Know ye that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are the people of his pastor. Therefore, he encouraged us to enter into his house with thanksgiving and with praise. I welcome you this morning to the house of the Lord. There are brothers and sisters and the family who, who are watching or participating in the service on the various platform. I want to join us here in this congregation to welcome you. It is our prayers that as we worship Almighty God and fellowship with each other, that we will all be blessed. Thank you for coming today. If it were not for you, then we would have closed the doors of the church. But God has given your mind to worship. God has given your heart to worship. And therefore, you've come to worship him. Let's worship him. Let us pray. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, we return thanks to you for your great love and mercy. We return thanks to you for the life you have given to us. We return thanks to you for our brothers and our sisters, families Hallelujah. all across this world. We say thanks to you, God, for making it possible that we are able to meet in church Hallelujah. and we are able to meet with others online. We ask you now, Holy Spirit of God, that you direct our worship. May our worship be as unto you. We pray that thou wouldst bring to us us the many that are coming to church today we pray god for a special blessing upon this congregation as we worship you and lord we pray for a special blessing and anointing upon your servant who will break the word who will bring a message to us from you we pray that thou blessed the ones who are on the instrument who play the different musical uh, instrument. Oh God, we ask that thou would anoint them. We thank you, Lord, that you have made it possible once again for us to come. And we are here to worship you. And that's what we're going to do. Hear our prayers today, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. 
You may be seated. As I said before, we're here for praise to God and for fellowship with each other. Are you happy that you're alive? If so, let me hear you praise the Lord. No, 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 no. You are not happy that you're alive. Let me hear you give a praise to Almighty God. Okay, stand on your feet, please. And just, just lift your hands, clap your hands. Do it however you want to do it. Give a praise to Almighty God. He certainly deserves every praise that we can give to him. Thank you very much. We're going to worship with the praise and worship. Hallelujah. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship. Every praise. morning so we're gonna sing holy spirit thou art welcome in this place praise god holy spirit thou art welcome in this place holy spirit thou art welcome
Amen. There is none like you, Amen. Lord. Hallelujah. There is none like you. No one else. No. No one else can touch my heart like you. like Jesus we could search throughout all eternity search before search now search again there's truly none like Jesus this morning I want to bring your attention to the book of Mark chapter 4 and uh, we're going to be reading from verse 35. As a matter of fact, Sister Deidre is going to be reading from verse 35 through 41. That is Mark chapter 4, and she'll be reading from verse 35 through 41. I'm going to be asking you to please stand as she reads the word of the Lord. Mark chapter 4, 35 to 41. Please stand. God be pleased to bless the reading of his holy words. And the same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. 
and he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they fear exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Again, I want to welcome on behalf of the congregation here this morning, all family, all members, all friends who have come to worship the Lord with us. We're very excited that you have made it to church this morning whether you're in person or you are online. For those who have not been here for a while, for one reason or the other, we would like to say welcome to you. We want to welcome our friends and the friend of our brother from Germany. They are worshiping with us today and we want to welcome you to JA the best country in the world. And uh, we are hoping that you are enjoying it, your stay, and uh, that you will tell your brothers and sisters, all family in Germany, that there's a place named Jamaica that they need to visit. Thank you for, for not only coming to Jamaica, but gracing us with your presence at church. We just want to say how much. And so we welcome you. We'd like to welcome God's servant with us. He and uh, his dearest friend and his beloved wife. Dearest friend and beloved wife. Amen. She has to give me a smile if I say it. Right. Yes, dearest friend and beloved wife. We're so excited to have them both here. They're traveling from all the way between Kingston, Portmore, and uh, St. Mary <laughs> to be with us. And uh, we're very, very privileged. I'll say a little more about him when he will come to us with the word. So let me welcome you all and look forward to a good day in the presence of the Lord. It is time for us to high praise worship God. And uh, we're going to be taking a special from the choir and they are, then they are going to come in the audience to worship the Lord with us on high praise. So as they sing with us and for us and to us, it is a prayer that God will anoint their voices so that they can minister to us. God bless you, choir, or members of the choir. Can you worship the Lord? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All my life I felt so lonely. I was searching for comfort within. Satan tried to deceive me, saying that's not the wages of sin. Then I heard a 
Rapa. Jehovah Rapa. Jehovah Rapa. Jehovah Rapa. Somebody praise the Lord in the house today. I know what healing is. And I know who he let me. The truth is that doctors have always given to me some kind of medication, different kind of medication when I feel sick in my body and I go to them. But the truth is that the medication worked best when I committed to the Lord and asked him to work through the medication. And so, if he does not do the healing, whether through the medication or by just divine intervention, my body will remain. So we want to be thankful we want to be grateful that we want to lift him up for healing us. Now the congregation is going to stand for it's time to join and high praise to the Lord as the worship team worship with us and high praise to the Lord. Brother Durban, are you ready? Praise God. Are you ready? Praise, praise the Lord. God. Praise Hallelujah. God. Amen. Don't you know that I'm moving up the King's Highway? Praise God. Don't you know that I'm moving up the king's highway? Moving up the king's highway. Don't you know that I'm trusting in amazing grace? Amazing grace. Oh, Satan. He's on the mighty track. Oh, I will never, never, never turn back. Oh, keep moving up, moving up, moving up. Oh, no.
Somebody lift your hands uh, and give a praise with your voices uh, to the Lord. He deserves every praise uh, that we can give to him. Listen to me. We're going to sing one final chorus. And I don't know. I want to live here for a long time. My Lord. But I'll tell you something. If what is happening now is what's going to continue to happen. Mm -hmm. Then maybe it's better for me to go and live with him. Hallelujah. And I don't think anything is going to get very, very better or oh, more better. God. I think things are going to become worse. Jesus. You're going to have more this box and more that box and more the other something. <laughs> they are going to have things that you cannot find name for because that's what the Bible said. Oh, In the last days, all kind of things. And this is all because of mankind. Mankind is bringing on this, these things on themselves by one way or the other. But I'll tell you, one of these days, one of these, fine one of these days we're not going to see yes. them anymore. Amen. Did you know that? Did you know that? One of these days. Amen. We're not going to see them no more. My God. So I tell you something. We're going to sing. You know my favorite song? I'm going oh, yeah. home. Uh, you know. Uh, remember, this must be sung at my funeral. I'm telling you now. If, if I'm here, it must be sung. Brother Moffat, you hear that? It must be sung at my funeral. And Amen. that's the only song must be sung. Wow. No hymn and all the rest of it. I'm going home to be with Jesus. And the preacher preached the word. And Carmen go bury me. You understand? 
Did you hear me, Sister Brown? My last wish and testament in ah. church today. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. Help me. I'm going home to Jesus. Oh, in the twinkling of the night. I'm laying on reservation for my mansion in the sky. Oh, I may not know the moment, and I may not know the day, but I know. Hallelujah. Praise Bless the, the name Lord. Of Jesus. Amen. 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 You got to have this assurance. You got to know it now. If you don't know now, you don't know what happened tomorrow. So if you don't know, get the assurance. I'm going to be with Jesus. I don't know if I'm going to live up there all the time. Matter of fact, what I'm interested in is to live in that new Jerusalem. That new city, that new place where Jesus, that transformed place where Jesus will be preparing or is preparing for me. Ladies and gentlemen, today the Reverend Doyle and his wife, his best friend, Michelle Doyle. A name come before that I don't remember, but the name I want to remember is Darley. But we're so happy to have Reverend Darley and uh, Sister Michelle. As I said before, pastoring now at the ranch, Church of the Nazarene in St. Mary. Reverend Doyle is a longtime minister. Even before he was a pastor or he became a pastor, he was a minister. And Sister Michelle was a minister in her own rights. 
She was never a pastor, but she was always a minister in the church of Jesus Christ. And so this morning, he has come with a message from the Lord to share with all of us. It is my prayer that the Holy Spirit would speak through him the message that he wants truly the church to hear. And just before he comes to share, before he comes to share, brother Durban, who you always want to hear sing, is going to do just a verse. And if he get blessed, he might do two verses, but just one. But if he get blessed and he begin to sing too, I just give him the opportunity. He's going to share with us a special song after which brother, friend, pastor, co-worker in the Lord, man of God will come. Brother Brian will come to share God's word. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. God is ready to be praised. Let's give him a praise another time. Hallelujah. He's ready to be praised. Hallelujah. I have journeyed to the long dark night. Hold on the open sea. By faith alone, signs are no Jesus, and yet is I. We're watching me, church, the anchor hold. Though the sheep is battered, the anchor hold. Though the sails are told. I'm good. 
God, we give you thanks and praise for today. We thank you that your love is better than life. We thank you, Lord, that our anchor still holds. We bless your name, mighty God, that you are with us in every storm. We thank you, Lord, that we do not have to walk alone. And so now, Lord, as we hear your word, I ask you to use me as your instrument. Lord, I do not pretend to be anything good without you. And so, Lord, I just sacrifice myself and ask you to use me afresh. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I want to greet you uh, on behalf of my wife and I from the Ranch Church of Nazarene, all the way in St. Mary, which is on the other side of the island. Absolutely wonderful being here. A uh, so couple of faces that I know, some faces that I don't know. I see one couple. Absolutely wonderful. So we just give God thanks and praise this morning that I that we can be here to bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I ask you again to turn your Bibles to Mark chapter 4. Or Mark chapter 4, yes. Read it from verse 35 to 41. And I'll be sharing you briefly from the topic. What do you do when water gets into your boat? What do you do when water gets into your boat? The scripture was read before, but we're reading it in short. As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let us cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus into the boat, in the boat, and started out leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. But as soon, but soon, sorry, a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking in the boat, and it began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him up, shouting, teacher, don't you care that we are about to drown? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Silent, be still. Suddenly, the wind stopped. And there was great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you afraid? Do you, have, do you still 
have no faith. The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They asked each other. Even the wind and the waves obey him. This morning, as we journey through this text, we want to answer the simple question, what do you do when water gets into your boat? And I, I don't want to presume that all of us would have gone through something in life where water got in your boat. The story is told of John Wesley and Charles Wesley, brothers who were leaving England to go to minister in, in the new land of America. They were going to Georgia, in fact, to preach to the Indians. And while they were going, they were sailing on a boat on a big ship that had three masts. One, two, three, that they, they, you pulled up the cord and the sails went up. And when it catch wind, it would, it would sail fast. And when the wind died down, they'll take it down. While they were sailing, they met up on a storm. And the storm was fierce. It was no normal storm they would have seen and, and they, they, the captain tried his best to navigate around it but in navigating around it they were tossed and from side to side and, and the main mass broke and John Wesley who's given account said he and his brother they were panicking and they were crying to the Lord while they were a set of Mennonite Christians who just sat calmly just waiting to see God deliver them and he said when he got to Georgia, he was perplexed because he was crying to God for help while these Mennonite Christians were just sitting calmly reassured as if nothing was happening around them. I know that not all of us have the luxury of sitting calmly relaxed and assured in a storm. In fact, my first recollection of a storm was Hurricane Gilbert. Anybody remember Gilbert? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. So at that time, I lived in rural, deep, deep rural Westmoreland. So there are two sides of Westmoreland, if in case you don't know. There's the flats and the hill. And my house was in a little community called Pike in Lambs River, where most of you never hear about. But I, my house was positioned on the bottom of a hill, near the bottom of a hill so my house was here and there was a hill ahead of me there was a little gully right here and there was a hill behind me now what was special about the storm was these things a nobody in my community knew about the storm until sunday i guess we we're watching profile i believe and and there was a, a, a bulletin that came that said there's going to be a hurricane well nobody in my house knew what a hurricane was apart from my grandmother but well, she said, Jesus going to save us. And you know, when Granny said, Jesus going to save you, Jesus going to save us. Full stop. So the next morning we woke up, and like normal, there were two things in my house you could not miss out on, school and church. So Monday morning I got up, and she said, go to school. So I got up, and I went to school, and there were only two students and one teacher, and the one teacher probably just came to say, please go home. And we were there this Monday, and my grandmother was unperturbed and my uncle came and said mama mama we're going to kneel up the bed and he's like no it is a wooden house he's not like, no when it's concrete and so we're going to kneel up the window mama said one word and he said i tell you jesus is going to take care of me and one uncle started kneeling and the next uncle came and carried food and what if i can beef and thing and patty and we were just i was happy because there was going to be an abundance of food but the two my two Uncles were kneeling up and buttoning down and ensuring that everything was okay. And she said, God is going to take care of me. When they left, shortly after the wind started to blow, but country, that is not, not that is normal. Wind blow normal. And then it got a little more intense and a little more intense. And then mama locked the door. She was in her room and I was in mine. And there were just two of us in the house. And for the duration of the first leg of the storm, this was my recollection. She sang, I fell asleep, I woke up, she was still singing. And I remember one time, I could hear the wind coming from behind me. So it was on the hill coming down in the valley, coming up the hill. And I remember as it came, it rushed and the house rocked forward. Because you know, it's them house where you have the front is on stone 
but the bark have some still. And as the, as the wind rushed up, the house danced up. And then the wind was coming back down. You could hear it coming, and it went back down. And the house rocked back, back way, and my granny was still singing. I have to saw him came, and I passed, and I came outside, and I found orange and whole things in the yard, and I was enjoying myself, and I walked down the road, and a lot of houses that were concrete, roofs were gone, but my little granny house was still there. And then we went back inside, and the hurricane did its thing. The Tuesday morning, we got up, and we walked in the community. My, my aunt, who worked at the clinic, she was living at the, the, the nurse's quarters. Her roof started leaking, so she went up to the clinic, figuring that the roof was better in. She said, while she was there, she noticed all of a sudden there was a bright light. And she wondered what was causing this bright light. And something told her to look up. And when she looked up, roof went. And she and another person had just go to the shop beside her. Because the storm came and ravaged the community. But as I looked in my yard, we had a kitchen, we had a house, we had a rabbit coop, we had a bathroom, we had a toilet, and all of these were separate. And not one single one was damaged. And I believe that not one single one was damaged because my grandmother's faith was not in her own protection, but in God's protection. The question I ask us this morning is, what do we do when life troubles come upon us? Let's examine the text. Because we find a number of things in the text. If, if you read the text correctly, from verse 1 to verse 34, Jesus was teaching all day. He was speaking in parables, and, and as he spoke, his disciples wanted to understand what he was talking about. So he spoke in parables and in parables and in parables. And one, he spoke in two parables. If we follow Luke, if we follow Luke's rendition of it, he spoke about the parable of the farmer sowing seeds. And he also spoke about the mustard seed. But at the end of the day, Jesus says, I'm tired. Let's go. Let's rest. So they started out, verse 35 tells us, that they went to the other side of the lake. They wanted a time to retreat. You know, Greg, after you have a, a hard day of work, you want to rest, don't you? Yeah. Come and talk to me, want to? So he's going to rest, but notice something in verse 36. It says, some other boats followed. Because Jesus' disciples, at least four we are sure of, were fishermen, and three possibly others were exposed to fishing. So seven out of 12 had a good idea about fishing. You are sure that they, when they went sailing, they recognized that it was good sailing weather because no good fisherman goes sailing when rain is going to fall. Talk to me, people. So he goes, they are sailing, and then we reach the first situation that we meet upon. There is a sudden storm. There's a what? For most of us, some storms are periodic. We can see it coming. In fact, we're in hurricane season now. But there's some time when we face some sudden situation. And this storm was one of those sudden situations. You couldn't see it coming, and therefore you couldn't plan for it. So the disciples, they were sailing. Others were were following sailing and they met upon a storm. There are some life situations that we encounter that hit us in an instant. There is no precaution that you can take. In fact, my, my, my uncle in law was driving recently and he was driving from Kingston to Montego Bay. He was trying to find some parts and he was driving in St. Elizabeth and he saw a car coming towards him. And he said he tried everything he could, but there was nothing he could do to escape being hit. There are some situations in life that we have faced that some of us are facing and some of us will face that we cannot escape. They are like storms that come up suddenly that we want to run away from, that we want to hide away from, but no matter where we, if we go left or right, back 
our front is coming to us. We, we can't outrun it because we're not fast enough. We don't have wings to outfly it, so we just have to deal with it. And so, so Satan works that many times he sends some stormy situation against us. He sees us growing, and he doesn't want us to grow, so he's going to send a storm. Just as how it's hurricane season, and we're preparing, and we buy four for things. During non-hurricane season, we eat it off, don't it? Sometimes we face some storm when we least expect it. So the disciples face it, face, sorry, a sudden storm. Secondly, it was severe. Secondly, it was what? How we know it was severe? Let's, let's, let's see if we can find it in the text. Look at verse 37. But soon a fair storm came up. And the waves were breaking into the boat. And the boat began to fill with water. I spoke to a fisherman. And the fisherman said, he's not afraid of going to sea. He said, he's not concerned about water outside the boat. He's not, all, he's not concerned if the water comes in the boat. What gets him concerned if there's more water in the boat than he can manage. It's one thing to sail and water splash on your face. It's one thing for some little bit of water to come in. When we're in trouble and when you know you're in trouble is when the water starts to accumulate and it get more and more and more and more and, and it gets ankle level and, and you're wondering what's happening. You try to navigate around it and it gets to your knee and the boat not sailing straight anymore. It starts sinking. This is what the disciples were facing. The boat was sinking. And for many of us, if we are honest with ourselves, life situation has been pushing us down. We escape one thing and our head comes up here again and it presses us down. We go back and it presses us down. And no matter what we, what we try, it's getting us. I know what it feels like because my cousin, as we speak, is currently in isolation at Sabama Hospital. Sickness. Some of us figure that we are good and healthy and strong, and one day, in an instant, there is sickness. It, it, it could be something else. It could be a financial disaster. It could be your children giving trouble, your very good, perfect children, not head with somebody them shouldn't not head with. Them that friend tell you, tell them, try something. And them try it. And before they know it, they are in more trouble than they could ever think about. A sudden storm. And it gets worse. Yeah. I work in prison. And I see the result of people whose boat has sunk. I, I've, I've spoken with men who said, if I had known. I've spoken and with women who said, if I had known, I would have made a different decision. But sometimes the severity of our situation tells us that we are alone. Talk to me. Anybody ever been going through some situation and you feel like you are the only one on earth that is facing it? You don't feel like nobody else. Let's look at the text. I want to show you something. Verse 36 says, the disciples were not the only ones sailing that day. Notice says, they, so they took Jesus in the boat and started out leaving the crowd behind, although other boats followed. Yeah. In the severity of our storm, many times Satan wants us to feel alone, because if we feel alone, it's easier to give up. It's easier to throw in the towel. Yeah. It's easier to say, Pastor, you don't understand, so... Me not come to church. It's easier to say, sister, oh, me hear you praying for me, but you don't understand my situation. There's nothing else I can do. I have tried all my best. And I don't see anyone going through. You can talk to me, you know, but until you have been in my shoe, you really can't. That's how Satan wants us to feel. And somehow, that's how the disciples felt. They felt alone, but they were not alone. Here's a gentle reminder. You are not alone in your struggles. So for my cousin who is in the hospital, 
in isolation. There are many other people in the hospital. Even if he feels alone, there are other persons. I want to encourage somebody that do not give up today because other persons are going through some other things. In fact, I was talking to somebody recently and he said, in fact, yesterday morning, he said, Brian, I lost my grandmother, I lost my aunt, my daughter acting up, my car giving trouble. I have to go and seek a counselor because I feel like it's getting too much. Have you ever gotten to the point where you feel like it's too much? And you look around and everybody else is smiling and happy. You come to church and you want somebody to come alongside you, but everybody's face look nice and rosy. And in your heart, you are dying. You dress up nice, you know, look good, smell good. But inside, something breaking. You are on your very last. Us. And you feel like giving up. In fact, you probably tell yourself, this is my last time I'm coming to church. Your, your kid is giving you so much problem. You say, Pastor, if I could only get help, if I could only speak to someone who is wearing my shoe or who have worn my shoe, I, I'd find some comfort. And Pastor says, sorry, but I can't. I don't know anybody in your shoe. And Satan says, I tell you, you're alone. And you say, when you feel alone, severity gets worse. You see, as a countryman, grew up in a board house. When my granny left, so I had to get bad to be left at home. I want someone to say, I'm not going to church at all. Somebody bought me two, literally bought me two and cut it so I couldn't wear shoes to go to church. Um, yeah, yeah I, I was crazy. And so for, for, the, for the persons who are listening online, I apologize. I stopped my toe. But I stayed home that day, and I never know that Bordeaux can make so much noise. Listen to me, man. The whole start makes some creak and creak and. Yes, man, and some crack and. I mean, I wonder, hold on. I wonder if I'm here alone here. I said, no, sir. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Somebody else is here that I cannot see. And, and so I got a little afraid. And that's what Satan wants us. He wants us to be isolated. COVID has come and has made the church, rather than the church coming together, we are pushed apart. And so we are isolated. And so many people don't come to worship anymore. They stay home. And, and they don't want you to know that they are struggling. And they stay isolated. And the more you are isolated, it is the easier it is for you to break. There's a prison in America called Supermax. Supermax is built with more isolation chambers. In fact, they had to scrap the amount of persons going to Supermax because when they sent an inmate to isolation, here's how it worked. I am in a cell here, somebody over here, somebody over here. And no matter how much I scream, we can't hear each other. A lot of men, hardened criminals, serial murderers, good year and become mentally challenged. So mad to tell them here because they figure that they are alone. Nobody is hearing them. I want to encourage somebody. Your storm may seem severe and more severe than it is because of the isolation factor. That's why the Bible says do not neglect yourself from the gathering together of the saints because I am so you going to problem. Because they are you alone, you come to church and you hear somebody testify and they are telling your life story word for word. And it's going to tell Pastor that you know, figure say it's Pastor Brown. Right. Tell them. All right. But because you never tell Pastor, you know, say somebody else is going through what I am going through. Yes. Let us not segregate ourselves because if we segregate ourselves, when the water come in, yeah. who will help you to put it out? Yeah. Who will help you? To throw it out. Many of us as Christians are like Jamaican fishermen. We cannot swim. You know, so most Jamaican fishermen can't swim. No man, most fishermen who go sea can't swim none at all. 
And that's why when they get into trouble, they don't come back alive because they cannot swim. Many of us as Christians, we like the comfort of being in buildings. And when, it, when we are hit with the problem, we start wondering, what should I do? But then we want to close, look at our final point and close. What do you do when water comes in your boat? When you feel like you're sinking? When you see everything turning upside down? Know two things. A, while the disciples were sailing on their other boat, sailing, only one boat had any savior. Talk to me. How much boat have any savior? So the others were worried about how do we make it out? They had to depend on their own strength and their own might. The disciples decided, say, me now go stay here so Jesus asleep. So they went and called the Savior. Our secret as a church is that when water comes in our boats, we have a Savior to run to. And so the choir sang, we have an anchor. I didn't know what you were going to sing, and you never know what I was going to preach. But you sang, we have an anchor that keeps, so when my troubles come, I know I can go to my Savior and say, Lord, I, I cannot do it. Lord, I need your help. Lord, I need your anchor. Lord, if I let out mine, I'm going to feel, Lord, that when calling on the Savior. And, and, and to know that this is divine set up. The brother saying, the anchor hole. Oh, yes. Imagine, yes. we have an anchor and the anchor hole. Yes. So when water pull up your boat, throw over your anchor overboard, say, Lord, I'm trusting in you yes. and in you alone. I don't care what is coming my way. I don't care what others will say. We are, we are living in a time now when serving God is becoming outdated. But our anchor still holds. We are living in a time when, when, when if we call on the name of the Lord, we are seen as radical. Call on his name because you know that your anchor holds. My grandmother is one person when she was alive, we could have tell any problem. You know why? Because we know so when she talked to God, God here. Yes. I saw it firsthand that the little rickety house. She was praising God. I never hear her beg God, none at all. There were two of us in the house, my granny and myself. And all she did was to sing praises. Yeah. Rev, I've come to realize something. Satan is after our praise, our peace, and our prayers. If he can get us to stop praying and stop praising, then our peace will go. In this case, the disciples were on the verge of losing their peace. But they said, we have something else that the other boats don't have. So they call on him. And they call on him and he, he did what? He spoke and everything became still. Here's something that I want to leave with you. If you do not give up, you will rescue somebody else who is struggling in the storm. If you give up, you won't know how much person you will allow to die because other persons are struggling and on the verge of death. Yes. But if you hold to Jesus, yes. if you call on him, right. when he speaks, peace be still. Yes. When he rebukes the storm in your life, yes. somebody else can benefit. Yes. The, the songwriter says, I am not my own. I belong to Jesus. And because I belong to Jesus, I'm making sure that I offer myself to him because somebody else Jesus. need help. Amen. Well, can you imagine that they were just thinking about themselves? Just as so many times when we are facing our struggles, we are only thinking about ourselves. But when Jesus comes to change our situation, somebody else will benefit. I, I don't know who in church this morning is going through your struggle because I'm not from here. And I don't need to know but the songwriter says, Jesus knows all about, and he will till the day. I want to encourage somebody that Jesus knows about your struggle, and he will guide you until your day is done. The fact that the sun is shining, don't give up. The fact that the boat is still on the water, 
Don't give up. It may seem like it's too much for you. Stop trying to bail it out yourself. Call to Jesus. Sing a song of praise. And that's why the psalmist says, the psalmist says, or the songwriter says, when trouble's in my life, I must do what? No, man. When trouble in your life, you don't start fussing and quarreling. You don't start fight and wonder. You sing praise. Job was losing everything in one day. He heard one news, then the next news, the Bible says, while one bad report was being given, before it was done, a next report was coming, and a next one, and a next one, till finally he heard that he has lost everything, including his children. Yes. And the Bible says, Job gathered himself and knelt down to worship. Yes. If you are in trouble, if you are tried, if you feel like giving up, even the boat full of water, drop to your knee and start oh. offering praise to God. Yes. Say, Lord, I am drowning. But if I have to go down worshiping, if I have to go down praying and not giving up because my anchor still holds, I want to encourage somebody this morning that your anchor still holds. The boat may be rocking from side to side, but your anchor still holds. Give a praise to God. Confuse the enemy. Let others wonder why are you praising? Like Job's wife. Let people wonder, how can you praise God in such a time like this? Let them start to, let them, let their minds be blown. But you hold on to your anchor and praise God. Amen. Don't let others tell you how to go through it hold if on. they haven't been through it. Hold on, hold on to your anchor. Yes. Yes. Somebody say, no man, give up. Tell them, say, no, Jesus is my anchor. Somebody said, curse God and die. No, Jesus is my anchor. Water will always be in the boat. Water was in somebody's boat before ours. And water will be in somebody's boat after ours. But if we hold on, we can and tell the next boatman that I was in trouble. My boat was swamped. I was about to die. But when I call on the Savior, he spoke peace to my situation. Let me encourage somebody. Jesus still speak peace yes. to our situation. Yes. Your troubles may be going on for years. Your night may be for two or three years. But Jesus promised that joy will come in the morning. Don't give up yet. Don't give up yet. Your boat full up. Don't give up yet. I would suggest last thing. Put down the pan where you try to throw the water and start to look up yes. to the Savior. Yes. The pan can save you. But if we call to Jesus, if we say, Lord, I need your help. If, if we encourage, the songwriter says, sometimes we have to just encourage ourselves. Yeah. Sometimes we are alone. And we don't have past such a car. We don't have no credit. We, we please call me, run out. The phone now work. What do you then do? You have to talk to God yourself. You have to go to the Savior and say, the Savior, yeah. I need you. Right. Savior, if you don't come to my rescue. Yeah. Lord, I don't know how long I can last, but I'm holding on. Lord, if I die, I die, but I'm holding on. The Bible says that weeping may endure. Some of you are going through your night season, and you feel like this night is too long, but there's a morning coming. Jesus says when your morning comes, everything around you will change. Age. Yes. The winds will have to obey him. Yes. The storms will have to obey him. Yes. The waves that were going up and down will be calm. Yes. And it's peace, perfect peace. This morning, I want to encourage somebody, don't give up. And before I leave, if you are here where you don't know Jesus, the difference between you and me is that I face Jesus with my storm with Jesus. And I'm encouraging you that you can face your storm with Jesus. It's not that life never hard. It's not that I've not been hit down many times. But because I've not let go, even when I did stupidness, Jesus pulled me up. I want to encourage somebody this morning that if you are struggling on your own, stop struggling and come to Jesus. 
I want to pray somebody this morning. I want to invite somebody this morning to come to the altar and say, Lord, I'm struggling. Lord, I need your help. Lord, I'm on the verge of giving up, but I'm going to hold on. If you are here this morning, don't watch no face. Just come to the altar. We still pray at the altar. The altar still work. So I invite you to get up out your seat and come. If you are online, type in the chat so we can hear and we can call your name. But this morning, don't sit in your struggles. Go back home in your struggles and wonder why Satan winning. Say, Lord, I'm going to step out. I'm going to pray because I'm not giving up. Last night I couldn't sleep properly because I prayed for my cousin. I said, Lord, whoever had to do a funeral the other day, the gentleman was walking. He had, he had heart problem, was on medication seemingly, that caused other complications, was walking in, in Richmond, in St. Mary, and reached a bar, called to this young lady. Fell in her hand, in her arm, started making crazy sounds, and eventually died. And at the funeral service, somebody said, I don't want you to say that he's lost because he was spiritual. I don't want you to say that in your situation, I'm giving up because I can pray. Because many times, even as Christians, we start praying. And before we finish praying, we start with mind drift off to pray. So let's come. We have ministers here this morning who will be willing to pray with you. We don't, I don't need to know your problem. And I'm sure Rev don't need to know your problem. But God knows. We're inviting somebody to come to pray. And if you're here this morning and you do not know the Lord as your Savior, we invite you to come and say, I will make you Christ my Savior. I won't struggle alone in the boat. I'm going to ask you to get who will be the first to come. And unlike Reverend Brown, I don't, I don't give long altar calls because I'm not trying to coax anybody. It's a decision you have to make to come to serve Jesus. If you have your struggles, come. If you don't know Jesus, come. If you just want somebody to pray for you, just come because we are here. We don't want you to go home the same way you came. Deliverance is here for you. So, in, so our sister has come. Who will be the next one to come? You, you know that you need a touch from God this morning. Don't sit in your seat and hope it won't change. Come. Come. Come this morning. There's a song that says, come home, come home. You are weary, come home. And that's a song for the Christian as it is for those who do not know Christ. As if you are weary in church this morning, you know that water in your boat. Let, let's use it and make an expression. More water than flower exists. We invite you. Lord, you know them by name and nature. 
Lord, you know the very secret thoughts they have. Lord, you said so much you love them that every hair on their head are numbered, mighty God. Lord, you know what they are facing. You know their struggles. You know the anguish of their hearts. You know, God, their sleep is nice. You know, Lord, when their pillows has been soaked with their tears, mighty God, we place them before you this morning. Yes, Lord. Just as you said before you formed them, you had a plan for them. Lord, yes, we pray yes. that this day they will feel, they will experience your touch, your divine touch of relief, God. They will experience the divine touch of healing, Lord. They will experience the divine touch of resurrection power, yes, mighty yes. God. They will feel your divine touch, mighty God, that cause all chains, all in time arguments to break in their lives, mighty God. So today we put them before you. Every single one. Every home that they represent. Lord, we present oh, them before Jesus. you. And we Lord, we hold up our hands oh, because we know that we serve our God who is Jesus. able to deliver even from the fire. And so Lord, whatever Satan has come against them with, whatever darts the enemy has thrown against them, Mighty God, we quench every one of them this morning. We, we declare, Lord, that the enemy's plan is no, no and void. We declare, mighty God, that your plan is activated. We declare, mighty God, that your, your people shall experience victory now, mighty God. And they shall walk away knowing that you are with them. Lord, for some, the troubles won't stop. But give them the assurance that while yes. the trouble is continuing, mighty God, for as long as it continues, you are with them. That you will never God. leave them or God you'll never forsake them, them, mighty God. Lord, I remember those in the hospital. My cousin Tommy, this oh, morning, I pray for your healing touch. Lord, cause him to experience in a brand new way. Cause that he will shout out, I heal, I heal, I hold it out no longer. Lord, we commit ourselves and this person's, your sheep, to you today. Do your work in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus, you're the only way my salvation. Wherever I go, I feel safe. Cause you walk by my side, I will thank you for your love and care, Jesus my shepherd, you kept all your promises that you gave to me, the day you said me free. Brother Durban is going to be singing that song. And you're going to be given an offering and tithes to the Lord. But before he does that, I want on all of us behalf to express thanks to brother, pastor, Brian Doyle for not only coming to us, but for allowing himself to be guided and led of the Lord. It's a, it's a message to encourage. It's a message to help us to understand that we have a God who never leaves our boat. We don't see him. <laughs> we think sometimes he's not there. And sometimes we question when the storm gets rough. God, are you still there? He is still there. And he will show up in his time. And things going to be good for you. So again, we say thank you. We want to, you. We want you to bring our greetings to our brothers and our sisters that are in Saint Mary. We do not know. Maybe ninety percent of them, but God know them, and God know that we have brothers and sisters who we don't even know yet but they are part of our family. So if you forget, Sister Michelle won't. 
So, so we are asking you both to convey our greetings to them. May the Lord just bless you. And uh, we look forward to you sharing with us this evening. Our evening service will begin and we're asking you to be out by 6.30 for early start. Remember, this is the first night of our crusade. We are going to have tonight in the church and uh, throughout the week from Monday to Thursday, we are going to be on the outside. We're going to be at the Burns Savannah Crossroad. Monday night, we are going to be at dawn. If, if, if you know where to live, Allen, just right up the road there. And uh, one night, we are going to be in Bamboo. So it's Burns Savannah Crossroad. It's Bamboo. And we start right up there. We're asking you to be out for 6.30 and no later because we have to to be out in the hour and 50 minutes time. So we pray and ask you to be out and be out in time. Then next week, from Sunday to Sunday, we will be meeting with God and his servants as they deliver God's message to us. And uh, it is by faith that I'm saying, and first Sunday, I'm sure my board will not say no. We should be considering baptizing those who surrender their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is faith. This is faith in action that people right now are giving their heart to the Lord Jesus and are just waiting because they want to be part of God's family and they want to do everything that may be necessary for them to be full-fledged member, members of the family of God. So we are going to ask you, members, to tell it wide and far. And we're going to ask you to be out on time. We're going to ask you to invite all your friends and family. Let them come and let them be a part of the worship beginning tonight. And uh, we're looking forward to the other night. Please uh, bear in mind the sick ones. Their names are there. I'm going to ask you to remember them in your prayer. Sister Janet, that is is Sister Janet Williams, her father, um, Mas Arthur, will be buried, who died, will be buried Saturday, on Saturday, and it's going to be, the funeral is going to be at the Ricketts River Westland Holiness Church. Brother Quarry's relative died also. We do not know exactly when will be the funeral yet, and maybe he doesn't know as yet, but he will be giving us the information and uh, you will all know about it. We're glad to see Sister Desai. You know that the Desai's family have lost loved one and was buried uh, a sad Sunday ago last Sunday. We want to pray for their strength. It was a good brother that left them and it really took a hold and especially Mr. Desai and other members of the family let us continue to pray for them. Please remember our, our institute. Please remember NASDAQ Institute and the uh, PDO. Oh, PD, PDO. Invite you to sign up for team training level one. Six days training. They are coming in to the training. And the first class will begin in August, about the, the second week in August. Please remember, if you register now, you can be among the, the batch, the first batch of 20. They prepare you in all the different areas there. And once they give you a certificate, you can show it to the tourist people. You can go to the hotel and say, you know who I am? I am a certified person. By that company in level one, there's going to be a level two and there's going to be a level three. We have the facility for it and they are coming in to do the training because they want to be sure that when you get that certificate and that certificate is looked at, they cannot do anything more than say. So you can come, come next week for an interview. So please remember, don't get left out. My people must be first. Amen. So, if you are not in the first 20, you might get 
left. So sign up now. There's about 18 people already or somewhere like that. 16 or so sign up already. You only have four space. So jump in, right? Because it's going to be a very good program. And the NASDAQ Even Institute will start uh, will start in uh, um, September. And I tell you, people are going to be signing up. Man, keep baking and decoration. Woo! You know that something? Electrical installation. Where are they going to be? What kind of program those? Who's going to run it? Oh, we have had top notch teachers who are ready, waiting for the program to start. And uh, thank God we have the facility. Anytime you want to go upstairs, there are there, look on the classroom, big, all kind of something there. Not a mercy. When you go inside there, the tile on the floor only invite you to come in and look. So we're asking you, please sign up. Teachers ready. Teachers ready. And others are wanting to support. Make sure that you are part of it. Education. We are shooting for all of our people must be certified, must be qualified because you're going to live on earth likely for some more time. So, yes. So, congratulations to all of those who have passed their exams and are moving on. Congratulations to those who are celebrating birthday. May the Lord bless and keep your their names. Have, you have seen their names and we say congratulations to them and God bless you on your birthday whether today this week or even before in the month God bless you and those who are still celebrating the anniversary Mr. Waman had anniversary this last week Waman and the man celebrated good aye 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 yeah yeah man Man, have a good anniversary. Celebrate it good. One woman with one woman. We just want to thank God for everything that God continued to do on our behalf. We look forward to see each other this evening and we look forward for you to tell others. Rain or shine shine unless the rain come until 7 or after 7. If the rain come until 7.30, then that's alright. Stay home and pray. Stay home and pray somebody into the kingdom. No worry yourself. Pray somebody into the kingdom. But if it's stopping at all, come right yourself. Stay up line. And you who can come, now stay up line. We know what I'm bench only. We want you. Right? So we look forward to you. My friends, from Germany. Again, it was nice having you in church. Amen. May the Lord continue to bless you. And thank you for taking somebody who is with us today. Amen. Nobody knows who that person Amen. is. But thank you for taking him. It kind of it kind of like a long time. Kind of like a long time we don't see you understand? So we are very thankful. All right, it's time for you. You're going home now, but you don't like to go home with what you bring to give to the Lord. And I'm so happy. So we're going to ask you, please, take it from your purses. Take it from your wallets. Take it from your pockets. And we're going to ask the usher, one will hit the gate because those persons want to go quickly. And the others will be coming down, will be coming down to you. But one hit the gate because those outside would like to move quickly. So they're going to give. And Brother Durban is going to make sure you feel good when you're going home. Please remember, this is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to meet with Sister Nepal and uh, uh, sister, well, Sister Joan and the others are not here. So I will need your life, Sister Nepal. Right? God bless you. And I, I will meet Brother Chris and Brother Durban. I'm going to meet you in line late tonight. Online. 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 
Mm -hmm. Mais ami, pas line. She was blind. We have need my life. All right. Okay. Yes, Jesus, you're the only way to my salvation. If you've given your offering and your tithes to the Lord, I go, may I ask you to stand up? Because you walk by my side, I will tell Thank you for your Please love stand. and care, Jesus, my shepherd. You kept all your promises and you gave to me. The day you set me free. I'm going to pray for the offering so that you can go soon as you have given your offerings and your tithes. But I want to remember here, Yuri was not well. Amberly was not well. And uh, Ali was not well. Tally was not well. Please remember them in your prayer and continue to pray for Brother Bolin. Thank God he danced today, but he's still not feeling well in his body. But thank God he is on the ship. Amen. And board. God is with him on the ship. Yes. So that's why he's dancing. He uh -huh. The ship is kind of buttering, you understand? But he, he has faith that God is going to keep him safe. Hallelujah. Lord, receive from us today our tithes and our offering that we are given for your cause and for the work mm. to be done. Bless it. Sanctify it as we use it for the cause for which it was given. We say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brother Darwin, send them off, please. Oh, please.